Hello. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about action potentials and how it is that they travel through a neuron. So, firstly, in the top right corner here, we have your visual of a neuron. An action potential, if it is being transferred from another neuron, will be received by the dendrites here. These are connected to the cell body, also known as the soma, which is then connected to the segmented portion known as the axon. This axon transfers any signal down here to the axon terminals. These will transfer a signal over to another neuron so that the signal can continue to be directed. This right here is a membrane potential graph. So when an action potential is fired, you see that a lot of things happen in the neuron. And this is represented uh, by the charges and how they change within the neuron. At the resting state, which is also known as the resting potential of a neuron, there is no action potential being fired, there's no stimuli. And that is found to be at around negative 70 millivolts. When there is an accumulation of stimuli or strong enough stimuli, um, there will be the firing of an action potential only if it reaches a threshold which is located at negative 55 millivolts. At that point, there will be a massive depolarization of that neuron, and so on. So, before we talk about what actually happens when there's an action potential, let's talk about what happens when there isn't an action potential. In its resting state, the inside of a neuron is actually negatively charged, as shown here. The inside right here is negative. However, its surrounding environment is positively charged. Now, when there's an action potential, you will see that the inside of the neuron is positively charged where that action potential is located, and the outside is now negatively charged. However, the rest of the axon will be negatively charged on the inside and positively charged on the outside. As the action potential travels down the axon, as shown here, you will see that this flipping of charges also continues to travel down the axon. Um, so the areas that have not been turned positive will remain negative until the action potential gets there. And the areas inside of the axon that have already been positive will revert back to being negative. And I will explain why in a second. <clears throat> so here we have the membrane potential chart that was shown just a second ago. And it's labeled one, two, and three, corresponding with the visual, visual uh, demonstrations right here. At one, you have a neuron that's at its resting state negative 70 millivolts. There's no action potential, no stimuli of any sort when, it, when a neuron is in its resting state. Since there's nothing going on at that point, here at one you see that there are sodium channels uh, which are in orange and potassium channels that are in green. The sodium and the potassium channels at one, which is the resting state, are both closed, meaning that there is no transfer of ions either in or out of the neuron. Now, if an accumulation of stimuli occurs or if there's a strong enough stimuli to cross that threshold and fire an action potential, there will be a massive depolarization of the neuron, which is labeled S2. Here in the visual for two, we know that it is due to the fact that these sodium channels are now opening, allowing for a massive influx of sodium, positively charged sodium, into, this, into the neuron that causes this massive depolarization of the neuron. Please note that the potassium channels are still closed due to the fact that they have a delayed opening to an action potential. Finally, at three, three represents a hyperpolarization of the neuron and the reason for that is because now you have potassium channels opening up allowing for the exit of potassium ions from the neuron whereas sodium channels 
are not closed, but physically blocked. Now, what this means is that they have a physical barrier here that is preventing sodium from coming back in like it was up here. However, eventually, both the potassium channels will close, and these sodium channels will also unblock themselves and close as well. Now, as mentioned before, there is a hyperpolarization of these neurons after an action potential is fired. This has to be restored to its resting state, to the resting potential. The way this is done is with sodium-potassium pumps, which are shown right here. What they do is they pump in three sodium ions. <clears throat> and for every three sodium ions, two potassium ions go out. <coughs> Excuse me. So this allows for the ion concentration within a neuron, as well as outside of the neuron, to be restored so that another action potential can be fired and therefore cause for an influx of sodium and an outflux of potassium. This restoration takes time. Not only does it take time, but it also takes energy because it's these pumps are trying to move these ions against their concentration rate. This is why these pumps use ATP. That is all. Thank you very much.